hi students welcome back today i will be starting with a chapter force as you can see on the screen this is the first chapter of icc syllabus and i am following the book of selina publications so what is force actually as we are studying physics everything here is a physical quantity so force is a physical quantity that causes or may tend to change the state of rest or the state of motion of an object force comes into the picture when now when there is an interaction of two or more objects force is any influence which causes an object either to undergo any change in speed or in change in direction or in change in shape so let me repeat it once more again see force is a physical quantity which uh, which when applied to a body suppose someone pushes you so uh, if you are standing that is the state of rest and when you are pushed you either fall down or you look turn backward that is you uh, your change of rest or state of motion is changed that uh, that is what force produces force causes something uh, some changes to a body Uh, when a moving body is applied force it can cause a change in speed or in direction or in shape let let's go to the next slide so next slide shows us that there are three types of force there are various types of force but i have divided it categorically into different types of force first one is combined force combined force itself sounds like something is plus or added combined forces if you can see here the picture a girl is uh, uh, pushing something a uh, wheel and a boy is also pushing in the same direction so if the direction of force is same so the force that is exerted by the girl and the force that is exerted by the boy is combined here so uh, if uh, suppose the girl is exerting 30 newton force and the boy exerts 40 newton force so now it can be like the total is 70 newton force exerted in that direction and if uh, they are acting in opposite direction it will be always uh, the force resultant force will be always the difference uh let's see the second one contact forces contact forces as you can know from the name whenever there is a contact between two bodies physically there they are in contact then that, that is known as contact force the examples can be like friction force tension force here uh, just a simple force that is known as contact forces if you apply if you are going in a vehicle in a road and suppose um, there is a force due to the uneven surface of the road that uneven surface produces a force on the vehicle that is known as tension force or collision force that is a a type of contact force the non contact force we will be studying in, in the later chapters like electrostatic force where uh there uh, the two bodies where the forces acts are not in contact but still the force acts on it magnetic force we will deal all that in the future let's see oh, another type of force there is another type of force that is uh, due to circular motion if a body rotates in a circular motion there is a force existing there that is known as centripetal force actually the force is centripetal force when a body rotates in a circular circular motion as we can see here the diagram shows that the um, body rotating along the line is known as centripetal force but there is another force which acts outside towards the center of gravity and that force is known as center of centrifugal force let's read it what does it say a force acting on a body 
away from the center of circular path is called centrifugal force centrifugal force describes the tendency of an object following a curved path to fly away from the center of curvature as we can see the arrow mark is out of the circle this is known as centrifugal force centrifugal force is not a true force why it is not a true force it is a form of inertia the tendency of an objects that are moving in a straight line to continue moving in a straight line why it is not a true force i will be coming back to this slide after explaining the newton's law of motion centrifugal force is referred to the force for convenience if a body uh, suppose uh, uh, you have seen a pendulum which is uh, available in the earlier days in the clock if a pendulum will be always in a um, to and fro motion it won't stop so if it is in that motion it will continue forever in a to and fro motion uh, similarly uh, if someone sleeps and he is in that position always that is known as centrifugal because they continue in the straight line whatever they are doing either in rest or in motion they can if they continue moving in the same thing that is uh, a not a true force that uh, that refers to centrifugal force but here we have to keep keep in mind that this centrifugal force is a force which uh, which is a type of inertia force but the thing is that centrifugal force only 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 we have to consider it for circular motion things if a ball let's see this example and you can understand it clearly if a ball is swung on the end of a string imagine this a string is there and on the end of the string a ball is a ball is tied so what will happen you can see that the ball starts vibrating or moving and how does it vibrate it always move it always follows a curved path the ball uh, uh, the ball is said to exert centrifugal force there is some force exerted by the ball on the string and that is known as centrifugal force tending to break the string and fly over the tangent why, and why it is called centrifugal force because this the ball is exerting some force on the string and why it is known as centrifugal mainly because the ball Uh, the ball moves in a circular motion that's why it is centrifugal force and this is what the ball acts on the string let's see what what are the newton's law of motion you must have studied in class 8 9 or 7 all these laws and you must have uh, already by hearted this all definitions so just um, just giving you a little bit glance about it so first law states that if a body is in state of rest it will remain in the state of rest and if it is in the state of motion it will continue moving in the same direction with the same speed unless an external force is applied on it this also applies to centrifugal force whenever it is moving it will move or if it is rest it will be in the rest position but a centrifugal force is only for circular motion but this first law of motion is for all types of motion not only for circular it's for a translational linear or any type of motion this definition applies to all so what's newton law of motion is also known as law of inertia the body uh, the tendency of a body to oppose or resist any change in its state of rest or uniform motion is called inertia of body it is the inherent property of each object and um, why there is an inertia of a body because there is a mass the property of inertia is because of the mass of the body so the greater the mass greater is the inertia of the body and the examples here shows that the table on the table there is a book and the book keeps uh, remains on it unless it is displayed and the if a ball is rolled on a horizontal surface and there is no friction nothing stone no force then it will continue to roll on it unless 
unless any force is applied on it. Let's go to the second law of motion. The rate of change of momentum. What is momentum? You must have studied Mo momentum is the product of mass of a body into velocity of a body. And second law says that the rate of change of momentum. Rate of change means anywhere if we write rate of change means it is divided by time period always. So the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied on it. And the change in momentum is in the direction in which force is applied. So here we can see that uh, the initial velocity of a body is mu and the final momentum is mv. Change in momentum obviously you can see that mass we keeping in common final velocity minus initial velocity. Rate of change means anything divided by time period. So this one by t. So what we get force is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum by rate of change of time. And why, why, how did we get this deduction from the second law of motion? And if, if there is a proportional symbol means when we are giving equal to, we have to put a k or a constant here. And so uh, it comes as force is equal to k m a. And if we take the value of k is equal to 1, then force is mass into acceleration. What is the unit of force? The unit of force is Newton in SI unit. 1 Newton is the force which when acted upon a body of 1 kg produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square. And what is acceleration again? And what is uh, this um, Newton? And what is the relation between Newton and Dyne? What is Dyne? Dyne is a smaller unit of force. That is in CGS system. We will learn about all this. How the um, relations comes. Like how much Newton is equal to how much time. In our next video. Uh, now coming to the uh, third one. Newton's third law of motion. This is a very common one. To every action there is equal and opposite reaction. But one thing you have to note here. Is one force is uh, known as action force and another is reaction force. The action and re reaction never act on the same body. This one should be underlined in your mind also. That the action and reaction never act on the same body. They, But one thing, they always act simultaneously or at the same time on different bodies. So these are the examples. This girl is pushing this door with her palms and the door is putting the pressure on her palms. So reaction is on the palms of a girl and action is on the door. Similarly here you can you have seen this uh, various time in your books that whenever you trigger the bullet there is a reaction and action going on. Similarly in this rocket uh, when uh, gases, uh, when we put uh, action or uh, force on the gases, the gases put equal and opposite reaction on the rocket and it allows it to go upward. Thanks for watching this video. I will be continuing this with this force chapter and all the definition how it deals with um, Newton and Dyne and all the relations with it in the next video. Thanks for watching.